Welcome back to Rauscher Racing Weekly. I'm Blake Rauscher, driver of the 3R. I'm Evan Rauscher, driver of the 07. I'm Brent Rauscher, driver of the 16. And we are here and we're talking about how we're getting ready for the summer season. The winter season just ended. So I know you guys, you two race a little bit more of the winter racing this season. So let me hear what you guys have. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> as you know, I worked with Brent and uh, Derek, his dad, to help set up Brent for the Red Bluff season. And uh, we had a pretty good, solid season with him. Uh, I think we were consistently in the top 10. I'm pretty sure in the A main and we made most of the A mains. I think there was only one or two we didn't uh, from just not having the luck that we needed. But then uh, started like halfway through the season, I talked to my aunt, my uncle to see if I can go racing with them since, since we already go there anyways. So I was asked to, if it would hurt just to load up another car and go racing with them. So, halfway through the season i started doing that did pretty good made basically all the a mains besides one and um that was just because i think it was the electrical failure or the fuel pump that did that and i was running in the transfer spot i would have transferred to but besides that my season was pretty good then ending it on a well was, was going to be a good note running third in the at nationals and then fell back to fifth and got put in the wall but besides that the season was really good yeah, um, as Evan said, he helped us all year. Um, he he made some bad choices, but I figured out how to drive it, and he made some good choices. Um, it was a big learning curve. So, yeah, um, I was pretty happy with how my first season went. Um, it was okay. I know it could have been better, and I know it could have been way worse. Um, the beginning of the season, I didn't think that I'd be able to race the rest of the winter, at least half the winter season, because of what happened on race one. But luckily I was able to continue to race and uh, and now Blake will explain what he did. Yeah, so um, I didn't get to do too many winter races this season, but um, the few we had were rough. We bent a lot of parts and stuff, and we didn't really have any good races until the end. And even those races were harder for us we broke a lot of stuff at nationals until the final day and then we finally pieced everything together got the car set up and i was able to pass cars and move my way to the front but other than that yeah um it was a pretty decent winter season for the team but for myself not so much but yeah it was uh not too bad lots of races we've never done a full season like that you uh, brent was the first one in our family i believe to do a full season there we haven't done anything like that usually just go a couple races which was the plan so for me, that was normal, but for Evan, he got to go a lot more than we have, so yeah. And now, um, we're getting ready for our summer season coming up at Cycland, starting next weekend. Today, on this Saturday, uh, is our practice day. I know we wanted to go, but we weren't gonna have all the cars ready. Um, Brent's getting a new car, so his dad wanted to get that put together without having to rush, so they're taking a little bit of time getting that ready to go. Um, me and Evan still have some stuff to do. We'll get that ready to go, and we'll go out there. And hopefully, since we learned a lot last season because we did a full season there, we will all have the knowledge of the track and what to do with the car and set up. We can go out there and put up a decent season. Yeah, how Blake said, uh, we still have a little bit of stuff to do on the cars before we're actually is act ready to go racing. But how we did, me and Blake ended it on a pretty good note last season on the final <laughs> race. And we both finished inside the top 10, I believe, in that race. And then even Brent, he did super good. I don't. Remember, I think he was in the top 10 as well, but we'd like to thank Sparks Diesel Repair, Kim's Custom Tumbler, and Straight Up Performance. Yeah, we'd like to thank them, and we'd like to thank Pizza Factory, CSTV, and Artistic Fence. And I'd like to thank Christensen Automotive and ProtoFab for all they do in getting me through the season with all their support in my career.
Well, ready to keep rolling here with our now open intermediate B main event. First time we've seen the open intermediate class so far today. They are 16 car B feature on the racetrack. The top six will transfer. 15 laps will be the distance and your starting lineup looks like this on the pole in car number 60 it's taylor morrison outside of morrison in the number 10 r it's ryan bonner second row 1m of shane marquez outside of marquez in the 19 d it's drew barry third row the 24k of koa crane outside of crane in the number two x it's max mitry fourth row the 4k of kennedy cotton and the 12m of maddie mckee and then your fifth row the 27t of tyler Matheny and the 10v of elliot venucci Sixth row, 17M, Evan Goulardi, and the double zero M of Kenzie Marquez. Your seventh row on the inside, the 88K of Kellen Ramsey. Outside of Ramsey in the number two, it's Brody Petrie. Your eighth and final row on the inside, the three R, Blake Rauscher. And your final starter in this one in the number 14A, it's Andrea Ramsey. So 16 cars, 15 laps. Six will transfer into the open intermediate A main event. Trying to get the lineup set here. Green flag in the air. Open intermediate A main event is underway. Out front as the yellow waves is the 10 R of Bonner. So yellow flag with two laps completed. Looks like the 4K of Kennedy Cotton slowing on the back straightaway. She'll exit out the door. And they'll try and take that 4K into the Fastenal hot pit to make repairs.
want to thank Bo Perkins for helping out on the push squad here today for the final day of the West Coast Nationals. Always good when people step in and help out. Takes a little bit of stress off the officials down there on the infield. Lights out. We get ready to go back to green here. Oh, racking down the front straightaway big. The 2X of Max Mitri upside down in a big way down the front stretch. And the flagman never even flinched. That is number 26 on the weekend for the flip count. Max Mitri. So all four cars that are stopped here on the front straightaway involved in that accident. The cars in the right Max Mitri, the one that went for the rollover down the front stretch right at the flag stand. So that is the second yellow for the 4K of Kennedy Cotton. So her race will come to an end. Looks like Kyler Shaw dialing up an instant replay for those of you tuned in on fast4media.com. Yeah, that one had already started well before Kyler got back to it, but Max just got up over the right side of one of the cars. I believe he went up over the right side of the 12M. But they'll both make it into the Fast and All Hot Pit now as it's going to be busy down there. Maddie McKee and Max Mitri heading in to make repairs. Moving back to look at the 2X now. Trying to see what what we can. Not a whole lot going on there. Looks like they're working on something in the, the brakes. Maybe the brake pedal or something off the 2X. But they make it good enough to roll out. So two laps in the books. Ryan Bonner leads Shane Marquez. Koa Crane is third. Elliot Venucci in fourth. Then looks like Tyler Matheny fifth and Evan Goulardi in sixth. Tyler Matheny's had an eventful week on Friday night. He flipped in turn number one over the wall and out of the racing surface. 
and then later in the qualifier had the right front or on Friday in the qualifier had the right front tire come off of it so it's been an, an eventful weekend not the way the three time main event winner this year would have hoped to have it go but still trying to put that 27T into the main event he runs right now inside of a transfer spot Evan Goulardi is on the bubble in the 17M in his first career start in the Open Intermediate class. Green back in the air. Evan Gulardi with a good restart. Gets around Tyler Matheny. Moves up into fifth. That drops Matheny back onto the bubble spot. Oh, the 10 are going to go around and into a quad. Ryan Bonner spins into the infield and hits Bo Perkins on a quad. That's what Bo gets for helping out. Bonner was sideways and then got the rest of the way sideways after the 10V got into him and just slid into the infield. A couple of cars around in turn four as well. Bonner able to refire. So four laps complete, 11 laps to go. Shane Marquez now leads Elliot Benucci. Koa Crane in third. Evan Gallardi fourth. Tyler Matheny fifth. And Kellen Ramsey up to sixth now in the 88K. Kellen Ramsey in a transfer spot after starting deep in the field in this one. All right, single file restart. Oh, the 2X broke. Yellow coming out. The 2X and Max Mitri broke over in turn number two as they were getting ready to come back to the green. Looks like whatever was loose or broken in the front end of that car really let go. He was back up to the eighth spot but that'll more than likely be the end of his weekend.
So should be just about ready to go here now. Well, trying to get the two of Brody Petrie to go talk to the official on the back straightaway. And he stopped on the front stretch. So trying to get him to go around to the back straightaway to talk to that official. Bryce Sanhagen on the back straightaway. The communication between the booth and the drivers when we can't get a hold of them over the receiver. Lights out, ready to go back to green now. We're all crashing at the rear of the field. Bonner and Ramsey, and that will be it. Yellow going to wave. So that will be the second yellow for the 10R of Bonner. Well, this has been an interesting one so far. The 10R should be his second yellow. So that's two yellows for the 14A of Andrea Ramsey as well. So she exits. Looks like a rolled black being issued to the double zero. There's Kenzie Marquez. Green in the air, back underway. Still looking for the top six out of this one. No, the two of Petrie tried to get there, but Kellen Ramsey holds it. Now the three R Blake Rauscher goes by. Oh, the double zero. Into the corner over the 88K, and oh, we're gonna go yellow as the 88K collects the leader. The 10 via Venucci gets collected in that one. So Kellen Ramsey and Elliot Venucci, the two cars tangled over in turns three and four.
So six laps to go, but drivers and officials being told that the next flag will end the race. This one has already gone on for 16 minutes. So the top five have broken away, and now the two of Brody Petrie into sixth. We continue on under green with 12 laps completed. Tyler Matheny's found his way up into the second spot. Shane Marquez continues the lead. Evan Gulardi third, Coa Crane fourth, Blake Rauscher fifth, and Brody Petrie in sixth. White flag in the air, one lap to go. Final time off of turn number four, checkered flag in the air. Green flag is out. Wow, McNary with a great start on the outside, takes the race lead from Jack Phillips. McNary, a little bobble off the corner. Here comes Phillips with a big move to the inside. He gets in, oh, he's upside down. They're both upside down in a big way. The ATP keeps on running, but the red's out. The steering wheel, both the 22X and the 11 just bent their steering wheels. And, oh, we've got them slow. Everybody keeps going, we'll stay green. We're back underway here, the 29 is Chevy Schroer leading the way in the Jesse Heating and Air Conditioning number 29 car, Woo boy. Forcing around and we've got them piling in. Daytona's next weekend, boys. We got a big one over in turn four. There we go, green flag in the air on tonight's open intermediate B-Main. Oh, we got them upside down in turn two, we'll go red. 